Good evening. I would like to speak about a very interesting topic for a few minutes. Uh, when I speak to people over the years in lectures and seminars, through emails, telephone calls, uh, I always find the same thing repeat. Uh, people who are secular Jews, and they're not keeping mitzvot almost at all, uh, when I try to get them interested to come closer to the Torah and to God, I find that some of them, many of them, I would say, they always answer a similar answer. What is it? I'm okay the way I am. I'm happy in my way. You be in your way, in your life. Let me live my life. And, uh, you know, please don't try to affect me in any way. You know, I'm okay the way I am. No thanks. That's basically what they say. And when I try to investigate a little bit what makes you so happy, we know that, that most people have financial difficulties. We know almost every person has some kind of sickness. We know many families lost their deals and problems and bankruptcies and IRS and jails and credit card debt and who knows? So much problems around us. So how is it possible that all these people, they claim that they're okay in, my, in their ways? The answer is, they are convinced in their mind that religion is something bitter. It's terrible. If I'm gonna be like them, I'm gonna lose the little happiness that I have in my life. You know, it's gonna make me very depressed. Therefore, he doesn't even wanna give a chance. He's not even interested. Some people, they are so close-minded, they don't even wanna listen to one lecture. You give them a CD, they don't listen. Hard to believe. Why don't you try, give half an hour of your time? Maybe it will wake you up and maybe it's going to be a beginning of something. What do you have to lose, really? The answer is, I once had in my mind, in one of the lectures, with Hashem uh, help, uh, a story that I made up. It's based on uh, the time of the slavery when the blacks used to suffer from the white people in Africa. They used to be slaves. There was one person, his name was Conta Quinte, and he was a slave of a white man in Africa. And one time a businessman from New York went to Africa on a business trip, and he saw that this white man beat up this African slave. And he was trying to save him from the whip. And he told him, excuse me, why are you beating him up? He said, listen, this is Africa here, this is the rules. So he said, okay, can I buy this slave from you? How much? $20. He gave him $20, and he redeemed Conta from his master. Then Conta told him, sir, if you leave me here, I cannot have freedom here, you know. You either take me with you to your country or you leave me here, that's it. Somebody else will grab me. So the American businessman decided that he's right. He bought him a ticket and he brought him into your New York. Now we're stuck with him. What is he going to do with him? So he decided that he's going to get him a booth in the subway in Manhattan. And he's gonna be a shoe shine, you know, shine shoes for people, make some money. He give him a bed in his garage, and he say, okay, no, I'm take you on my way to Manhattan every day. I drop you with your boot there, and that was the arrangement. After two months, that Conta is singing, dancing, coming home so happy. Give him a piece of bread. He's dancing. Thank you, thank you, Master. You're the greatest person on earth. One day. He comes to pick him up from the shoe shine booth in a subway, and what does he see? The booth is there, but Conta is not there. He's gone. No message, no nothing. He was looking all over for him. He got very nervous. Maybe something happened. He couldn't find him. Six months down the road, six months later, one day he crossed the street in Park Avenue, and he see a beautiful limo. Apparently, what happened? One rich businessman came, and he saw that while Conta is shining his shoe, he's very happy, dancing, whistling. So the rich man asked him, excuse me, sir, what makes you so happy? You work in the most miserable job on earth. What kind of job is this? You're making a few dollars, you shine people's shoes, and you're happier than me? It's impossible. He started to tell him, listen, if you knew, only knew where I was three, four months ago, you would understand why I'm so happy. The guy told him, wait until I hire you and you're gonna be my driver. You'll be a lot happier than this. So Conta said, okay, I'm listening. What do you have to offer? He said, you get $1,000 a week, 
I get you a nice tuxedo, you have cigars, whiskey, and you're going to have a much better place to live and everything, and you'll be, uh, you have a great life. I'll teach you how to drive a car, everything will be fine. And he grabbed him from there, and he became his chauffeur. Six months down the road, when the businessman that brought him from Africa across the street, he recognized him on the light in his limo. He grabbed him out of the window, started beating him up, screaming, you ungrateful, look what you did, you disappeared, now you became a driver, you're not ashamed of yourself. So Conta said, I don't know, what do you want from me? I, you know, he said, well, I have one question. You are the happiest man on earth. I was jealous with you how you're dancing and singing and you're so happy. Why all of a sudden you left this happiness to go somewhere else? Conta's answer was, Sir, I only thought that I'm happy. I didn't know anything better. Now when I became a driver in such a fancy car and I have hours to myself, my businessman is going on meetings, I sit, I, you know, I listen to music, I eat well, I live in a beautiful place, look at my clothes, my cigars. You want to compare this to shine shoes? You took advantage on me. What kind of job you gave me? <laughs> That's it. That's the mashal. That's the story. What comes out of it? This is us. When you don't know what Judaism is, from the outside it may look bad and, you know, frightening. But really when you start digging inside and revealing the truth, it cannot be bad. You know why? Because our Creator made it. He made us. He made our soul. And he told us the greatest thing for you in life is this. This is my Torah, this is my truth, this is a ticket for life of eternity. However, since you never learn it, you don't know what it is, you think it's bad. The Torah say, Ta'amu u'u ki tov Hashem. Taste! Get used to it! And you will realize that God is the greatness. The Torah is the sweetest thing on earth. If you don't try, you'll never know. Those people who are telling me I'm happy in my way, it's only because they don't know what they're losing. They're missing. They don't know. If they only tasted, they would know 100%. And obviously those Baalei Tshuva, all these Jews who made repentance and started to learn Torah and changed many things in their life, when they look back how they used to be, they are ashamed. They're embarrassed to see how they used to be, how they used to get dressed, how they used to talk, how they used to steal, how they used to do bad things. Now they look at their life in a much valuable way. You give them anything you want to return to what it used to be, they won't agree. Ignorance is a big risk. When you are ignorant, you are paying the price later on. Let's hope we'll wake up before we'll miss the train. Thank you very much and all the best.